Hey guys, if you are a self-taught programmer or you're thinking of becoming a self-taught programmer and you want to get a developer job, then this video is for you. So for the purposes of this video, when I say self-taught programmer, what I mean is somebody who did not go to college for computer science or software engineering and taught themselves programming by using the internet as their main resource. Now, the reason why I'm qualified to explain this is because I myself am a self-taught programmer and I have worked in the field for about six years now, and I've done everything. I've climbed the ladder from junior to mid-level to senior developer. I've worked as a um, software consultant. I've worked in architecture, DevOps. I've pretty much done it all. And on my journey, I've met many people who have also taught themselves programming and gotten into the career. So I have my own knowledge along with other people's knowledge. So this is gonna be coming from an accumulation of knowledge of both me and also a lot of people that I've worked with and talked to over the years. So to be clear, this is going to be a step-by-step -step guide for those who are trying to become self-taught programmers, already are self-taught programmers, and are trying to get jobs in the software development industry. All right, so let's get started. All right, so the most important first step is to go ahead and start studying various areas of programming. And I don't mean like the technical side, just look and see what is out there. See what languages are available, what those languages are for, what industries exist, what industries are popular. Try to figure out what you're interested in and then try to narrow that down to exactly what type of job you want. So do you wanna be a web developer? Do you want to do DevOps? If you don't know what any of these things are, you need to start here. It's really important to have a good clear goal when you're aiming for that first programming job because there's so much terminology and jargon out there in the world of programming. There's so many different areas of programming that it's important for you to know exactly what you need to be focusing on when it's time to get that interview and also when you start. Now, this phase that I'm talking about here is all about trying different things, trying new things, failing, figuring out what you like, what you don't like, so that when it comes time, you actually know what it is you wanna do and you can focus solely on that and become a master of that specific thing. And I say master, but you know, just know it good enough to be able to be productive in it. And that way, when it comes time for you to start applying for these jobs, you know exactly what it is you're trying to apply for. You almost are certain you know what they're gonna ask during the interview. And when you start, you know exactly what you're getting into. And it's really good to figure out what it is you don't like early on, because let's just say you chose React on a front end web development job and you know, you've been working there for a year and you just, you're miserable. It turns out you don't like front end development. You really wish you would have gotten into DevOps or something like that. Now you're already in the job and now you are a year into it and you have to, while you're working, figure out all these other new, um, these other new skills in order to get a new job when you could have just spent the first year or so figuring out what you do and do not like. Now, the next part is figuring out when you're ready. Now, I see this question a lot and I had the same question. When do I know when I'm ready to start applying for these jobs? This hump is kind of difficult to get over because really what it takes is confidence. And in order to gain confidence, you have to make yourself believe that you're ready. So when you yourself believe you're ready to start looking for jobs, then that's when you're ready. And one of the best ways to gain that confidence is to do practice projects, to do projects, intermediate level, beginner level, somewhere in there, level projects, um, to show and prove to yourself that you're able to actually write code. Make sure that you work with other people too. I think that's also underrated because when you're on a team, you're gonna be working with other people and you're gonna to have to understand how teams work together in software development. It's also good to remember that everyone still Googles, everyone still uses Stack Overflow. People still struggle daily as programmers. So we're always Googling, we're always trying to figure out how to solve different problems. So a good first step when you're at this point is to actually go online and look for programming jobs that you're interested in. You already know what programming job you want, so start looking up these jobs online and go to where it shows the job description and the requirements and look at the technical requirements. Don't worry about the college, don't worry about the previous experience, don't worry about that stuff. Look at what they expect you to know and then ask yourself, do you know these things? If you are absolutely unsure what these things are, then maybe you wanna go ahead and keep learning and you're not quite ready yet. But if you have an idea of what these things are, you can actually go and get better at them. One good example is I always see SQL listed in job descriptions, not always, but a lot of the times I'll see SQL listed in job descriptions. 
So it's good to go ahead and go learn SQL, for instance, and maybe you didn't know that SQL was something that you should have known. Well, now you do. Now, it's also important to understand that the technical requirements in these job descriptions are not the end all be all. From my experience, a lot of the times they're just kind of a template that HR departments use. But again, this step is still about gaining the confidence. So if you see these things on the technical description and you feel like you wouldn't be confident going there and going through an interview without knowing these things, it's important for you to, to at least be familiar with them. And finally, it's also important to understand that if you're applying for a junior level or entry level position, you're not expected to be a master of these things. They're going to ask you questions and during the interview, you're probably not going to know the answer to everything and you might feel humiliated and you know, you might struggle with certain questions and then when you get home, you might be like, dang it, I knew that that's fine. They don't expect you to be masters of it. They really just most of the time at these levels of positions just want to see your thought process and see if you have a lot of potential within the company. Okay, so another really important step is going to be contributing on GitHub. And the reason why I say this is because a lot of employers go through their software developers to find potential candidates. And when they do that, they may see a resume or they may see someone on LinkedIn. And one of the things that they do often is they go to their GitHub to see how often they're um, committing code and also the way that they write their code. So if you are committing on GitHub and you put some de attention to detail into the code that you're writing, they're going to see that and then they're going to give you a better shot than someone who doesn't even have a GitHub. Think of GitHub as your very technical resume. Speaking of online resumes, it's also very important to have a LinkedIn account. Now, if you have a LinkedIn account and you put that you have experience with programming, you're going to be getting a lot of people who are recruiters trying to get you to uh, talk to them and get potential because they make money by getting people hired. Now, I want you to be very careful about this because a lot of the times they're going to try to scam you. They're going to try to get you to work for them for a third of the price that you could be getting paid if you just got hired directly. It's still important to have the LinkedIn page because it's sort of like your online resume. It's your professional online presence to a lot of people. but if you get tons of job offers, be really skeptical of them, do your research, and if it's too good to be true, it might be. Now this step is for those who have absolutely no background experience in technology at all. So in other words, you don't have anything to put on your resume that might stand out and show that you actually have some sort of tech experience. What I did and what I've seen other people do is you just go ahead and get into an entry level technology job now. One of the easiest ways to do this is just to find like a, a, a Best Buy or a Staples or just something like that. Maybe get involved with Geek Squad or you know the tech department in um, Office Depot or just something really entry level where you can at least start getting involved with technology and you can start putting programming skills to work there. And actually while I worked at Best Buy, I worked in the Geek Squad, I actually used my programming skills to do certain things and I was able to put that on my resume. And while I was there, I actually studied the A plus certification. I got A plus certified and also they helped pay for that. So that's another thing you can talk to your manager while you're at these positions to maybe help fund or help give you some time or advice to study for these types of certifications, which will also look really good on your resume. Now, if you've done all of these steps, you should be at the point now where you could actually create a resume. And when you create your resume, don't use a generic template. I mean, you can, but it's what you want to do is you want to stand out. You want to show that you are passionate about what it is you're trying to do. Don't worry so much about the technical skills. I mean, they're probably going to read that, but it's not nearly as important as showing that you're very interested in what you do because they want to hire someone that they believe is going to stay there. They want to hire someone that they believe is going to be passionate about the work that they're doing and oftentimes willing to work more hours than normal people are willing to work because they enjoy what they do. I can't stress this enough. It's really important to stand out at this point because again, you don't have a college degree and you probably don't have much professional experience. So you really need to do what you can in order to stand out. And one of the best ways is to just be and show how passionate you really are about your, your, your trade. You're also going to want to have an online portfolio and you know, for a web developer, that's really easy because you're a web developer, just put together a website, showcase your skills a little bit on the website and you're good to go. But if you're a different type of programmer, maybe you're interested in C, C++, AI, um, systems programming, Windows app programming, you're going to have to do things a little bit different, but you're still going to want to have a website that can have links to places where you can demonstrate what you've done. Now, it doesn't have to be anything crazy spectacular because, again, this is an entry level position, 
but you want to just show that you're able to start from scratch and create something that is operational that they can see. Now this next step is for those who really, really want to get started and maybe you live in a place where you don't have much access to programming jobs and that is to be prepared to move anywhere. Apply to jobs all across the country that are willing to help relocate you. That way, if you do get the job, they can mostly pay for getting you there and you just have to be willing to move. Now, if you're absolutely not willing to move and you live in a place where there's absolutely no programming jobs, you can try to find jobs that allow you to work remotely. Now, as an entry level programmer, it's a little bit more difficult to find remote positions, but a lot of the times they'll fly you out there for maybe a year and you can work there for like a year and then you can try to talk to them into letting you move back to where you're from and work remotely then. After you have done all of this, you should be able to find a programming job. You should be able to find one pretty easily actually because there's tons of them out there and not enough programmers to fill these positions. This step is extremely important if you want to have a good career. When you start, work really, really hard. I mean really, really hard for at least the first year. Harder than you think you should work. Prove yourself because what you're doing here is you're learning. This is your first programming job, so you're learning things that you've never done before. You're learning how to work on a team. You're learning how the company works. Work really, really hard there. Prove yourself because then that's going to allow you to have more opportunities within the company. They're going to see that you are working really hard, so it's going to allow you to move up more easily. And also, again, it's really just solidifying your skills and your work ethic. So I just want to reiterate that it is very possible. I've done it. Tons of other people have done it. You just have to have the confidence to do it. You need to follow these steps. And if you do a few different steps, if you, you know, a different way, that's perfectly fine too. This isn't the only way to do it. This is just how I've done it. And I've seen many other people do it. And I know that it can work for you. So keep working and I promise you can do it. All right, guys, if you liked this video, please give me a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys in the next video.